For as far back as I can remember, I'd often dreamed of running away and joining the circus. But never in my wildest dreams could I have ever imagined that something so magical even existed. Hi, I'm Jamie Jury, and welcome to the wonderful world of Cirque du Soleil, where there is a finely balanced blend of spectacular costumes, world-class dance, acrobatics and theatre, and I might add, not an animal in sight. This will be an experience you will take with you forever. So for the next hour, sit back and relax, and let me take you on a journey, a journey to a world called... <laughs> Alegria! <laughs> Tonight is such a special night, not just for me, but for you guys as well, because tonight we are going behind the scenes with Alegria, where you'll get to meet an amazing group of people with a very special bond. Now, these people manage the complexities of touring with ease. They travel from city to city, they live out of a suitcase, some of them even with young families, but they manage to put on a command performance every night, show after show, night after night. Hello. Ten minutes for the parade, the musicians, the Mirabatska, ten minutes. Thank you. Me. I feel something, man. <laughs> Last year, more than six million people were entertained by Cirque du Soleil around the world. And this innovative company first performed on the streets of Quebec City. Formed by a couple of young artists, the idea was to create a circus based purely on performance and ingenuity. Long time no see. I was Australia, hey. And in less than 20 years, this little group has expanded into a multi-million dollar empire. Sydney's okay? Yeah, better. than Melbourne? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> getting better? One of those early visionaries uh, was Guy Laliberté. Cirque du Soleil began in 1984, but I think the journey started when I was uh, 14, 15, when I first started to get on the street and uh, perform there, and basically, uh, I went through I went through a journey. Guy La Liberté in those early days was a fire-eating, stilt-walking street performer. Armed with no more than an idea and sheer audacity, he managed to convince the Quebec government to fund his small but very popular circus, and the rest is, as they say, history. We basically treat Cirque du Soleil show uh, like any play uh, or a Broadway production type of show. So we, and that's what makes Cirque du Soleil show what it is, more a theatrical experience than a circus experience. Allegria is about a kingdom that has no king and everybody wants the power. The red man who is a fool of the king, he thinks that he has the power. Allegria! <laughs> You have all the nostalgic, beautiful birds who want the power. Then you have the young, energetic Bronx, the fast trackers, you know, who are young and vigilant, they want the power. You have the beauty of the nymphs, of the contortionists, the flyers who are so high up there in light. Basically, it's a big power struggle. That's what the story is. Now, alegria is a Spanish word for joy, elation and jubilation. And I believe that's exactly what these performers go through every time they go on stage. Now, it takes an incredible amount of hard work and dedication to reach this high level of performance. So behind their slick routines are hours and hours of fine tuning of the body and rehearsals. The force would do the same jumps. 
Now this, in my mind, is probably one of the most exciting acts in the whole show. They call it the Fast Track, and it's basically a 40-foot long trampoline built into the stage that makes the gymnasts look like they're floating on air. Now I've managed to get a quick coaching session with the very best that there is. Now I'm, I'm like grabbing for a second, then opening out, yeah? Not bad. And hop, little higher. Push. And push. Yes. Whoa. Yes, 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 yes. All right. When you go, don't so close to me. Oh, I'm, I'm bouncing you? Yeah. Okay. A little bit higher in your rotation, a little bit faster. This is the best training in the world. <laughs> okay, here we go. And hop. Up. Much better. Bravo. Nice. I'll tell you what, this is the most exhilarating act, I think, on this whole stage. It just feels fantastic because you're constantly just floating through the air. You feel like you're up there forever. Much better. So trying to get it now. One more time. Third okay. time is a good time. Think of your rotation a little faster and a little higher up. And hop. Nice. Very good. That felt well good. Done. Thank you. You're almost ready to come and join us. <laughs> Thank you, God. is set to Olympic heights when you audition for this family and only the best are invited to join. You see the process is tough and by the way I'm speaking from experience I did have a shot at it in 97 but for one very talented Australian this dream finally has been realised. Trapezist Anna Shelfer. What did you just if I turn slower then I can jump much better. I think that's what I was doing before is I was going trying to jump straight away. All right off you go. I certainly feel like I fulfilled my dreams of becoming a very good trapeze artist and for me that was always the goal and always the dream and so then working for Cirque du Soleil is like the bonus, it's like, um, you know, it's like confirmation that I'm good enough to be, to be in this company. Oh Leggy, okay. can you put me up? Tell me how you first got into circus. My family moved to Albury, Wodonga, which is where the Flying Fruit Fly Circus is based. Yeah. And there's six children in my family and four of us ended up at the Fruit Flies. And how old were you when you first started there? I was 12 when I first started. We were pretty much a bunch of daggy kids just doing yeah. our thing. Yeah. The first, the first thing I did learnt in the Fruit Flies was the tight wire. Mm -hmm. And we were very, very serious about it. So yeah. we'd be walking along like We'd have our little fan and you had to slide your feet and then we'd do the splits so we'd be like... <laughs> and then we'd make it and we'd come down and we're like... Ah, everything's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Once you've so actually funny. made it. It was like that was our big trick, doing the splits. In Australia it's really hard to learn aerial stuff just because we didn't have so many teachers here. And so um, going up through Fruit Flies I was really lucky because it was at a time where we had three major projects with Chinese acrobatic troops. And so they increased the skill level tenfold. Yeah. And also when I was with Circus Oz we had a training project with some French trapeze teachers, the Palaces. So again I had another step, another taste of, yeah. of what can be achieved yeah. and then I got a development grant from the Australia Council and they gave me enough money to go and study with Andre Sima who was my coach in Montreal and I spent 10 months studying with him to finally do the stuff that I'm doing now. Bend your 
elbow. I know you have to go through the rope, but try to keep your arm longer. If you have good teachers, you learn good safety practices. But having said that, I have landed on my head and I have smacked the bar into my head and had some nice stitches here and little things, but I've never had a really major, major accident, so yeah. touch wood. <laughs> I'm in my gear now, I'm ready to go. I want you to teach me a few of these little tricks. We're going to learn two tricks. Okay. And these are the very first tricks I ever learned. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Now the first one's called a bird's nest. A bird's nest. Which you probably did on the place in the playground. Yeah. You're going to face this way. Okay. So you're going to hang on to the bar. Yeah. You're going to go up and put your knees on the bar. Okay, on the bar? Mm-hmm. Like, so you go under, yeah. feet through, knees up. Okay. On there. No on trapeze, you always put your thumbs around the bar. Okay, there? Yeah. All right. You're going to take your feet to the side and put them on the ropes, both of them. Yep. Yeah. Don't let go of your hands. Okay. <laughs> and now all you can do is push your butt through there, head through there, and head up. And you have all a bird's right. nest. That feels pretty That's good. That's beautiful. I don't mind that at all. <laughs> but see, it's always a work in progress, especially the flying angst because it's just, a, you know, when you're in the air, it's unnatural for a human being to be in the air, so their body-mind perception in the air is different. And they have to train the most, like the trapeze, the flying man, and the flying egg, they train the most. You're gonna let go of this hand. Okay. Keep hanging on with that one, don't let go. Yeah. And bring this leg over to me. So bring it over, over, over. You're gonna twist, 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 Ooh, twist. Yeah. And look ahead. And there's your half angel. <laughs> so beautiful. And, and now you can come down. As Excellent. Well. Okay, I'm right. I don't, I don't know whether I like the half angel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. This is one of the uh, very special tricks I used to do in the fruit flies. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not really set to slay, but fruit flies. Okay. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> very nicely I executed. Nine point three. <laughs> Well done. <laughs> Ivan, how are you? I'm excellent, and yourself? Well, it's great to meet you. Good, uh, thank you. I've wanted to see this process ever since I saw the show. Okay. I've heard it takes you an hour to do your makeup, is at that right? At least an hour. Uh, it's very uh, tedious. Um, Got to be very precise with the uh, the shading as well as the the little artwork yeah. on the face. Uh, <clears throat> it's a uh, very um, it's hard, <laughs> yeah. basically. Hey, but I don't want to be picky here, but it looks like. This part on your nose is coming over to the right a little further than the other. Is that on purpose? Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. He's, a, he's a crooked kind of guy. You, you never know how to take him. He's very twisted, so his makeup has to, to resemble his character. Right. Yeah. So do you find you have to refer back to your little template up there? Uh, yes, yeah, sometimes. I have to remember how to keep that crook in the face yeah. so I look twisted. Right. And, and this is uh, very high and, and very curved. Yes, because I raised my eyebrows quite a bit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so would you say offstage you're a little bit twisted as well? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely twisted. But a good kind of twisted, a safe twisted. Oh, yeah. that's good. That's all good. <laughs> Tell me about your character. Uh, Cole's a nymph, 
So I'm just running all around in all different numbers. <laughs> just play and smile and yeah. look at people and yeah. just enjoy. So do you think that that suits your personality, that character? Yeah. Yeah? A lot. What's it like touring with your whole family? Oh, I, I love here to tour with my family. Yeah. Because everybody's with me and if I need something, they'll always help. And my, my yeah. dad is in the show also, so... Yeah, yeah. yeah I love it. Timofey! Привет! Hello, Timofey! My brother was just born a year ago. Yeah, so he's okay. He's very little. Oh, he's tiny. Yeah. So you're doing a lot of babysitting right now, right? Well, kind of, because I have school and show, so I don't really get to see them every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a I mean, are you fulfilling your dreams? Well, I never dreamed that I would be like in the circus, but when my dad was performing here, I said, okay, I want to be there. I want to yeah. perform. And your dad trained you originally? Yeah, he's my coach. <laughs> So do you think that he'd be more strict on you than, than maybe an alternative coach? Yes, maybe, because probably have more power than me. Yeah. That looks good. Thank you. Nice Thank work. you. Now this is the belly. Yeah, the big fat belly in the right hump. Uh, I, I reckon 10 hand. years and a few six packs of beer will take care like of this, that. Uh, yeah, it'll be perfect. Check That's this the out. comfort time. It's very hot though. Yeah, I can imagine. As you can see. There we go. See, it's a good job as a dresser oh, as well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> i got to get a job here somehow. <laughs> there it is. There you go. a lot of work that they put into these costumes. Because yeah. this is all hand jeweled. Makes me look sort of rich, eh? Oh, my beautiful <laughs> jewels and the velvet, eh? There Whoa. it is. <laughs> huh? Like to touch? <laughs> <laughs> there it comes. Here, he's, here he comes. <laughs> he's coming, coming out. Alegria! Do you make up little bits and pieces as the night goes on? Oh uh, yeah, improv. There's a lot of improv involved. Yeah. Uh, sort of characters. Uh, that's why I, I love the character so much because I can improv. If something doesn't go one way, then I can do something else to back it up. You know? Yeah. It's a very versatile character. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, we'll go break a leg. All right. Thanks, thanks a lot. See you soon. Later. Now, if the performers are the heart of this circus, then the music is its soul. Opera-trained Francesca Gagnon, accompanied by the wackiest band in the world, transforms the audience into a magical world of nonsense. Every time I, I sing the show, for me, it's, it's like the first time, you know, because uh, all is so beautiful around me, the lights, and everybody gives the, the best for doing the best show. Every time I sing this music, I, I feel very, uh, very happy because I love this, uh, this music. Can you tell me what this piece of music is right now? What this act is? Oh, it's a... Uh, how we spell that? Uh, Ula Oops. The Ula Oops? You know? Yeah. Yes, it's so this uh, is a beautiful piece of music. She's huh? a beautiful girl and it's an imaginary uh, language on this song. We have uh, lyrics for all the other song, but it's, it's the only one we have uh, imaginary language. I'd love to hear you sing a little bit of this. Could you quickly just give us a tiny little segue? Yeah. <laughs>
a lot of creaking going on here. Yeah. It's been a few years. I've got to get the cobwebs off. Well, what I have to do before I really do my bending and stretching, I really have to like just warm up the little parts of my body and crack everything. So. Right. As you twist, you can, I don't know if you can go further. I can hear it cracking. Crack. Is that you cracking? Yeah. Is that legal? <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> no. That's unbelievable. What is that, your back that's cracking? Yep. Wow. Well, it kind of helps me bend after, but I guess it's just used to, you know? Right. Because uh, I stretch so much. And, like, With what you do on stage, uh, I just find captivating. I mean, the, the audience is just amazed at, at what you do. And what about injuries? You, you, must, you must go through a hell of a lot of injuries. Well, you know, for me, working almost nine years already, you know, and bending all the time. Of course, I get like low back pain and stuff, you know. And circus, it's, it's not like a regular job. It's not something people can do like normally with their body, you know, twisting yeah. and tumbling, and especially bending like backwards and stretching, you know. Yeah. It's not meant to be, but it will go away. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get used to it. All right, now help me. Okay. Just made it. Good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if you do a little bit every day, maybe. Oh, so you're putting your leg on the inside. Yeah. Right I'm trying to stretch. Oof. Oh, no. Well, you don't, have to, that. you don't have to try and <laughs> bend all the way down. Hang on down, a second. You know? Do that slowly. What, what did you just do then? Not there. I just go Hang on. half split. One leg's up. Yeah. I can't even get there. And just right. put your arm down. Oh. <laughs> the there. There's no way I'm getting there. I feel like on the floor as well. That's fantastic. What's life really like on the road personally? I mean, you know, do you have a boyfriend or? I mean, what are you doing Saturday night? <laughs> well, on Saturday night I go to sleep because on Sunday night we have two early shows. So basically, well, yeah, I do have a boyfriend in Vegas where I live, and he works also in Mister, one of the shows of Cirque du Soleil, actually a flyer in my father's act. And we've been going out for eight months almost now, but we don't really get to see each other because I'm always away on the road. Sometimes it's hard, but you know, that's the way it is, that's life. You must spend a lot of time on the telephone. Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> but I spend more time on telephone with my mom than my boyfriend because <laughs> I can I can call my mom every day and speak to her for hours and hours until I say, okay, time for me to go. But yeah, yeah, I call like every other day or something. Well, I hope one day you two get to be in the show together. Thank you. I'm sure it'll happen. <laughs> I hope so. Good. Maybe. If not, I'm free. I'm, oh, you know, yes. I mean, I'll think about it. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, what we're doing here is uh, basically wrapping ourselves up just so we can uh, make sure we don't fall out of it. We want to, uh, to make it sort of a, a lock kind of thing there. Yep. What I do is uh, get over here. So right here, there's like no way I can fall out. Yep. You see, so I have my hands cuffed right here. Yep. And what I do is I, I roll up using a sort of a, a ring a still rings technique in gymnastics. Sure. So what I do is just roll up, hold a handstand, and then I roll back down. Yeah, so I'll show you a little test there. Okay. What I'm doing here is basically... Oh, fantastic. ...pointing myself, come back down, hold this for a little second, and then go back up into a iron cross is what it's called. Wow. And then I roll back up again. Then I Way to go. That. Hey, guy, how you doing? That is sensational. <laughs> now, what's this position called again? Uh, actually, it's, it doesn't really have a name. OK. Just uh, a rest position, if you want to yeah, call exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> Some uh, sort of artistic. Yep. Come back down for another little rest. May not seem like a rest, but it is. Yeah. And then I just roll back down. 
Ta-da. Oh, that is fantastic. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Oh. Yeah. Now, so this is something you've been working on for some time? Uh, yes, sir. Maybe like uh, four or five months. Right. Uh, I started in, in Biloxi. Yep. And we're in Mississippi. Yeah. And I continued it here. Uh, yeah. Can't Stop is something I really want to do. It's not going to be in the show, but this is a... Uh, on my own time, something that I want to succeed at. So wow. hopefully it'll go well if I train hard. You gotta give me a go on this thing. Yes, no problem, no <laughs> Can problem. You? This is great. Okay, so how do, how do I tie my hands up? You I do just... it, you go right here. Yeah. And you can go like that. Okay. And grab like that. So here. Right, and then grab. And then grab. Right. And that goes over. Yeah, and then you want to do hold it. Keep yep. that in your hand. Yep. And then you take this. Right. right, exactly. Okay, so now my hands are free. So yeah, so okay. now you can try. <laughs> <laughs> now what do I do, I go forward? From here you go, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> go forward and flip your legs over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, look at that, whoa. whoa. <laughs> you gotta keep that under, yeah, exactly. Okay, All right. this is great. You can try and roll again if you like. Go for it. Yeah, exactly. Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. I didn't oh. get out now. How do I get out now? <laughs> now I'm okay. hanging up here. Actually, you might just want to go back, turn over. Okay. Uh, backwards. Right. Take it easy. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, it looks like you wrapped yourself up more. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you got that thing. Okay, now how do I get out of here? <laughs> The logistics behind this circus is incredibly impressive. There's over 800 tonnes of equipment that pack into 70 containers with 140 odd staff, 56 performers, three chefs, four teachers, two physiotherapists and a huge big top with a seating capacity of 2,500 people. Whilst artists and crew spend many months away from their homes and their loved ones, the need to keep life as normal as possible on the road is vital. Education is a huge priority for the children of performers and the school-aged artists. However, they all seem to cope juggling the demanding schedule of performing and school commitments. Although not all the students have a circus career in mind. Okay. Hello, my name is Arthur. I'm from Poland. I'm 11 years old and my dad is an acrobat. You see. So how many days a week are you here in school? Five days a week. And what sort of hours? It depends. Like if we have uh, two shows a day. Yep. We're from 10.30 to 2.30. Yeah. And if we have one show, we're from 10.30 to 4.30. Normal life for us. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty normal, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, a gros ventre, a gros bedin. How many kids are in class with you? In my class, only me and Bachka, in my oh. class. Hello, my name is Bachka. I'm from Mongolia and I'm 10 years old. I do a little bit of characters on the show, and my dad is a coach for the acrobats, and my mom is the coach for the contortionists. So mate, you are the youngest performer in Alegria. How does that feel? It feels pretty normal. I don't feel like, wow, I'm the youngest performer. It's just like, I feel like I'm just part of it. Yeah. And when did you first start? I started when I was about four years old. What part of the show do you like the best? Of what I do? Yeah. Uh, there's a number called Strongman, yep. and there's this big strong guy that can bend metal poles or pick up people on a cart. I like being in that number because I'm a bird, so old bird, and I get to play around with him, and it's very fun. <laughs> And 
an author? What do you want to do when you get a little bit older? What's the big plan? I don't know, maybe lawyer or something. I don't want to really be in circus. Really? I want to finish school first. Okay. Do, you know, graduate and everything. Fantastic. And then you're going to get into studying law? Yeah. That's oh, great. Or maybe, or something like that. And Bochka? I will go to college and then probably study for being a doctor or a lawyer. I'm not sure which one. I'm from Russia. My name is Boris, and my dad does uh, Russian bars. He holds the bar. I'm 10 years old, and I practice uh, hand to hand. And how often does your dad train? Uh, with me? Yeah. Uh, about one and a half hours. Every day you train? Uh, except Monday. Give me a good leg. Okay, now bend over. Belt. Put your arms maybe to the side, let me see. Bring your body a little bit more front. Bend your elbows. Bring your body over. Bring your arms front. Bend your elbows. Uh, your hands down, your elbows up. Your hands down, hands down. He Go like this. Right, but, but round, maybe round under your leg. And bring your body over. After teaching jazz for something like 20 years, how does it feel to be in charge of, you know, 56 performers and, and contortionists and, and so forth? It must be a handful. It's, it's different. It's, yeah. um, it's much more directing and managing the, the whole 56 artists. And I see it as a continua continuation of my career. Right. You know, it's, not, it's much more elaborate yeah. to work with, uh, with, these, with talented people. Yeah. Because they're more acrobats than they are artistic people. Yes. Much go down. Yes. Be grounded. Be really, really grounded in the floor. All right? Okay. Not so athletic. Not so gymnastic. I know that's difficult. Forget all that and really in the floor. Ground yourself. Yes. So that's where the challenge lies for me, to make them more artistic, to teach them performance quality when they're on the stage. Okay. Don't make it too pretty. I'm trying hard, you know? <laughs> Big part of my job is to uh, guard the concept. Yes. Because Allegria was created in Montreal by a, a team of creators, and I have to keep it in the same line. No, 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 no. It's very light. The angel is very light. It's like an angel. Exactly. It's like it's like it's something angel. that's that's light and that's it protects. Slower, 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 slower better. Do you see yourself as a taskmaster? Or? I see myself as everything almost. <laughs> you know, I try to be there for them because I I believe that if the person is happy within himself then he will perform the best. You give something from your heart. You open the show here. This is the opening. God, it's a really responsibility there. Think about your daughter. Because in your heart, you're a child in this character. Think how she would do that with all her cuteness. And ask your daughter to show you how she gets from up, swing a leg and down. Just do a test with it. Do some research in it. Okay? Yeah, that's good. So in a sense, you're like the mother of, of Allegria. Also, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, with many children. And it's like a big family, yeah, because there are ups and downs and ups and downs. But we have lots of fun, and sometimes there's sad moments, and we all share them, we all feel them. A tapis rouge is basically a red carpet. In every show of uh, Cirque du Soleil, all seven, we all have in the artistic tent a red carpet, and it's a tradition. Every week, the artistic coordinator or director does a meeting with all the artists and it's called the red carpet because they used to sit on there. Whoever is an angel, stand up. Okay, put your arms in an angel position that you think it should be. Christina, come here for a sec. Sergei Voskovic, come. Right? Come
conceptually how it was created is Christina. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. The arms are long, the hands are open, and remember it's like there's a little light in your hand palm and you shine forward. Now I understand that for the guys it's difficult because you have big muscles. I understand. That's the excuse I get from everybody. Let's fix it. It amazes me that you can do all these wonderful and very complicated tricks in the air and that this you forget, the most simplest thing in the world you forget. So I want you to remember this. This is important. Next thing. Do you remember in Biloxi we fixed the finale? This thing. Do you remember that? <coughs> Hello, make your brain work. Did you remember? We did it. How long do you have to stay here? Till the blackout. Gino, come here for a sec. Come on. Come on. Oh, wait. You're the longest in the light, so your arms are? It's the biggest. Yeah, I know, we know that. But what's your position? What's your position at the finale? Yes, yeah, so you stay, you stay, you stay, you stay, you stay, you stay, you stay. Yay! All right. <laughs> oh, no, no, mate. I think I'll leave this to you, Junap. <laughs> Go ahead. You want me to do it? Oh, certainly, mate. I want to see this in real life. Mate, that is fantastic. I thought this thing was made out of fiberglass, but it's actually real. That's, you see that at Walt Disney, not here. Mate, Gina, I believe when you were young, I mean, you actually used to get bullied at school and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, that's hard to believe, mate. Yes, I got poked like this <laughs> by guys, pushed around, shoved. Yeah. I didn't have any big brother, and where I'm from, it's pretty rugged, you know? Yeah. So. The only way I thought that I would get respect is by training a little. So I started training at 15. Right. And it worked, you know? Yeah. It worked, so. Yeah. And do you mind me asking, what do you weigh now, Jan? In kilo or in pound? In kilos, yeah. 141 kilo. That is unbelievable. Big kangaroo, huh? Thanks for your time, Jan. <laughs> I'll arm rest you later, bud, all right? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Where's the money? Money talking. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. I'll be walking. <laughs> now, Ochki, how are you? Good. That thank looks you. so uncomfortable. No, it's not. It's, it's all right. Like, yeah, because you have to warm up well, and uh, doesn't hurt. Wow. And how long have you been doing this for? Um, since when I was five. Five. Yes, and I'm 16 now. Right. Yeah, it's nine years. limber or is it something that you had to train to do? Um, when I was small I had flexible body right. and burn, you know. Some people has like different bodies but mine is uh, flexible and right. uh, I, stayed, I stayed really young. A lot 
of people say that contortionists are double jointed. I mean, would you agree with that or is that just a wives' tale? I don't no, it's just like you have flexible body, that's it, yeah. you know? Yeah, I don't think it's <laughs> not true. Because <laughs> it looks like you've got about 16 joints to get your legs over the back here. It's pretty amazing. No. And tell me, when you're in difficult positions, yeah. what do you think about when you're out there? Having dinner later on or watching a movie or something or what? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> like, um, what's next tomorrow? What am I going to do tomorrow? You yeah, know? Yeah. yeah. But of course you have to be concentrated. So. That's it, an hour is up already, and I hope you've enjoyed this fantastic experience even half as much as I have. I'm Jamie Jury, thanks for joining us. Good night. So I go down, uh, no. get this position first. Uh huh. No, no. Like that. Downward. Uh, I'm going, okay. One at a time? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And, then, and up. then right here, hooking it over like that. Right. So once. And then you take this. Take it around. No, no. Other way, other way. Now what do I go? <laughs> down. Right. Right. Outside. Outside. Oh, this way. And then back up. And then grab here. And that goes over. And go like that. Down. Grabbing. And then up. No, actually, this way. Let me show you okay. exactly how to... It's a bit complicated. 